Some shows don't need a celebrity narrator to introduce the show, but this show does. In a world filled with endless opportunities, why would two men who have built 13 multi-million dollar businesses altruistically invest five hours per day to teach you the best practice business systems and moves that you can use? Because they believe in you, and they have a lot of time on their hands. They started from the bottom, now they're here. It's the Thrive Time Show starring the former U.S. Small Business Administration's Entrepreneur of the Year, Clay Clark, and the entrepreneur trapped inside an optometrist body, Dr. Robert Zuntner. Two men, eight kids, co-created by two different women, 13 multi-million dollar businesses. Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we're on the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Clinton Dixon's on the hooks, I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's a C and Z up on your radio, and now three. Well, Thrive Nation, on part two of today's show, I'm going to introduce you to yet another success story, an entrepreneur that is absolutely dominating and doing well. But before I introduce you to that super success story, I want to ask you this question. Why is it that virtually every single successful person I've ever met, that they all do the following three things? Well, why I've interviewed thousands, thousands of super successful entrepreneurs and all successful entrepreneurs. They all have a to-do list. What? They all have a calendar. What? And they all get up early enough or stay up late enough to stay on top of proactively managing their to-do list and their calendar. Think about it. I've interviewed Wolfgang Puck, John Maxwell, the founder of FUBU, so many successful people, and they all have a to-do list and a calendar, and they all either stay up late enough or get up early enough to proactively un- proactively stay on top of their calendar. So if you were to ask these people, what are you doing today? They would know. If you said, what are you doing tomorrow? They would know as well. If you said, what are you doing in five minutes? They would know. Why? Because they have a to-do list and a calendar. And why is it that the vast majority of people don't have a to-do list and a calendar? Here to talk about is David Frazier, the founder of BunkyLife.com. David Frazier, welcome to the Thrive Time Show. How are you, sir? Good, fantastic. Thanks so much for having me. Now, sir, let's talk about BunkyLife.com. First off, for people that are not familiar with the brand, what is it that you sell? What is the core product that you sell? So we make small log cabin kits that can be easily built in a weekend without needing any power tools or second mortgage. And ultimately, we help families create extra space for more meaningful connection. Um, They're little log cabin kits that anybody can build. So why do uh, you have a to-do list? And why do you have a calendar? And why do most people not have a to-do list or a calendar? Well, I can't speak for everybody, but I know I need a calendar. Otherwise, my day will just collapse into chaos, complete and total chaos. So I need to know where uh, to be. If, um, you know, for example, if I didn't have this on my calendar, I would have absolutely forgot. Uh, Even with my calendar, I almost forgot. And so um, I need to have a a to-do list so that I know what's what's the things I got to tackle when I have some downtime that isn't chewed up on my calendar. And then I need to have a calendar so I know where to be and when to be. um, So that when we're having meetings, when we're having um, scheduled time to get something done, that it actually happens. And I just feel like there's a lot of people that will come to me at conferences and they'll go, man, you always have a clipboard. Every time I see you, you have a clipboard. Wow. You always have a calendar out. Why do you? And they'll ask me that. And I'll say, I've never met anybody who's super successful that doesn't maintain a calendar or a to-do list. And so last night, as an example, my son was playing drums. He plays in a praise and worship band. And his performance was set to take place at 630 which meant I had to leave my office at six in order to be there on time. And if I had not put it in the calendar, I would not have made it there. And, and it wouldn't be because I didn't care, but it, it, the act of not caring enough to put it into the calendar would have been the problem. So we look at yeah. my list for yesterday. This is my calendar. And so right there, I cut off my day at six. It's done. Boom. And I immediately go to his event. And I just, my wife and I, we have this agreement. You know, I cut off my calendar at a certain time every day 
And that's when I do go do family stuff, you know, but with my schedule, this was my day yesterday, the stuff in red, uh, those were interviews. I did the stuff in green. Those are client interactions. Um, and I find a lot of people have two calendars. I find a lot of people have two calendars. They actually run around with two calendars, one for their family, one for their work, and then they forget and they double book themselves. Can you, can you maybe, have you ever dealt with that? Have you ever seen this, this phenomenon? Yeah. Um, and that's easy to do because, um, if, if you have two in two places, you're not going to be able to sync it up. There's going to be conf conflicts. If you just have one, um, you can have different layers to the calendar so, and different colors. In your case, you've got the different colors that tell you what you're doing. But I think having two calendars is a bad idea. It's just, just a recipe for confusion and double booking. Now, when people go to bunkylife.com and they buy something, let's pretend for a second that you did not have a written uh, to-do list or a project list um, with all the orders coming into bunkylife.com. What would happen over time if you try to keep it in your brain exclusively? Well, it would be a disaster. So, um, yeah, the reality is as soon as you get but like you, you can really only hold three things in your brain at any one time, probably probably less in my case because I'm a bit of an idiot. Um, so I would say you need you need to have um, everything that's not absolutely necessary written down. Um, so, you know, you'll probably remember to breathe. You'll probably remember to eat on your own. But other than that, it should be in the calendar. It's funny, kind of a funny story. Uh, yesterday, I gave a team member a task to do, and I it was written down. I need you to go do A, B, and C. And it involved driving from A to B, and then when you arrive at location B, it involved doing task A, B, and C. Person returned at the end of the day. This is a low-level, entry-level employee and who has big aspirations, and they showed up, and they said, hey, I got thing A done. I didn't get thing B done because I forgot. And what was the other thing? And it's a huge gap between that person, their level of production, and all of our consultants and coaches that are very high functioning, people that, that don't forget things because they don't try to remember them. They write it down. They have a calendar and a to-do list. I'd love to get your thoughts on, on that idea because this person was well-intentioned. And her reaction was, oh, I, I just tried to remember. I watched them. They, they didn't write it down. They didn't take the to-do list with them. And I almost feel like in our culture, people think it is a, a an intelligence test if they can hold as many things in their memory as possible. And it's almost as though they're doing a good job by not writing stuff down. Yeah, those, those waiters that come to the table and they're, they're going to remember all your stuff, they always stress me out. I like to see a pad, I like to see a paper when you're taking my multi multi uh, family order going on. Um, you know what, like it's not the stone age. We have paper, we have pens, we have, we even have digital things you can type out and, and you can have it to this on your phone. It doesn't have to be a pad of paper, but just why are we living in the stone age? We have this technology. Let's use it. I, I think there's a, there's something going on now that I think it's a deep thing. I think there's a, there's a thing we're going to talk about on part two of today's show, checklists and to-do lists and the importance of implementing those systems. There's been an entire book written called checklist manifesto that talks about how doctors have dramatically more uh, errors that result in death when they don't use a checklist. That's but the pilots of small planes crash a lot when they don't use checklists and to-do lists. Uh, people that are building buildings that refuse to use checklists and to-do lists have endless errors. And, it, and and you talk to these people, these private pilots that aren't using a checklist and these independent doctors that won't use a checklist. And you ask them why. And they, a lot of times they say, well, I just feel like as a professional, I shouldn't need to have a to-do list or, or a checklist or a, I, I, what is it that keeps people from using that technology called the to-do list in the calendar? It's gotta be pride. It's gotta, but yeah, maybe there's some type of deep psychological issue, but at the end of the day, I don't really want to be a therapist. I just want to be a guy that employs people that use checklists. So <laughs> if you can't get with the checklist program, it's probably not going to work out. <laughs> Right. That's it. Okay. So let's talk about it. So things that are on your checklist right now as you're growing bunkylife.com, you're gathering endless objective reviews from happy customers and you're reaching out proactively to new territories and new locations that are, that might be a good fit. Talk to me about some of the 
re re repeatable, the ongoing daily tasks that you're having to do out there to grow Bunky Life? Because I, I believe that a lot of entrepreneurs are guilty of hopping from one new idea to the next new idea because they don't want to implement the core repeatable, actionable processes that will actually produce results. Yeah, so for me, my part part of the business, it's reaching out to a hundred, um, roughly a hundred or more. Um, we're doing a YouTube influencer type thing right now, so we're reaching out to a hundred kind of people on our partnership list um, every single day is the goal, and and then um, getting Google reviews, like you said, getting video uh, reviews, so people that um, that are communicating via video are so much more effective at communicating what we do because we have a visual product. Um, so getting video reviews every week, um, and then, uh, you know, just measuring everything. So every week I'll, I'll measure what happened last week. That's super key for me. So that's I think uh, a lot of entrepreneurs. I think a lot of entrepreneurs though, love the new idea. They love having the new idea every week, a new idea, new plan, new strategy, new marketing system, new idea, new concept, new, 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 as opposed to mastering the things that produce results. And again, I know you don't want to be a therapist, but I'm asking because this is stuff I see on a daily basis. Why do entrepreneurs, we talked about this, they, a lot of them refuse to use a to-do list, refuse to use a calendar. And that third area I want to tackle is a lot of entrepreneurs refuse to do the core repeatable actionable processes. They always are looking for a new idea. What is that all about? Um, well, I think it is, there's a bit of, of a wisdom to it when you start, cause you don't know what works there, there. You have, you have nothing that's, that's working. So you have to throw a lot of things at the wall and some of them are going to stick and some of them are, but once you find something that sticks, it's way better strategy to triple down on that thing than try to find another magical shiny thing. Cause it's just, it's unlikely that there's going to be more than really three or four things that your business does that generate sales. There's going to be probably at the most two or three things that does that make sure the customer experience is good. So if you can just do those things really well and just just get better and better and better at those things, um, that's the the that go deeper with what's working rather than shallower and wider with things that might work and probably won't. Now, BunkyLife.com, right now, you guys have some great uh, products available. I mean, you're always expanding the inventory, always tweaking it. Uh, what's the most popular product? And if our listeners out there today want to learn more about purchasing a Bunky Life, what's the best way for them to take that action today? Okay, so two things to check out. So we've got our um, kind of two main different kinds of monkeys. One is monkeys with a loft and monkeys without a loft. So in our area, you can build a monkey with a loft up to um, basically the maximum size there. But in, in like, for example, Oklahoma, you can build um, a larger structure, 200 square feet we're finding out. Um, but it has to be a single story. So check out, check out the Haven Ultra Bunky with a loft, which is the one that Clay's got on the screen right now. And check out the Rockwood. Those are two really popular models in both categories. And again, if people want to purchase a Bunky Life, all you got to do, folks, is go to BunkyLife.com, BunkyLife.com. We just purchased a Bunky Life uh, ourselves that's being constructed inside the mall. I hope to have footage here in the next week or so uh, because we're setting up a demonstration model inside the mall, Woodland Hills Mall in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so I should have footage of that soon. Sir, I'll give you the final word for people out there that are taking notes. What's the, the final word you want to share with all the entrepreneurs out there, sir? Okay, if you're an artist type personality, you want your free spirit, you just want to drift in the wind. I get it. I was there. I was a musician myself. But even the successful musician artist type personas still have a checklist. They still have a calendar. They still got things to do every every day, and that form and function is going to add structure to your creative efforts and will actually give you a lot more success. So even the most creative people still have to do this. They still have calendars and they still get things done. Amen and amen. That's David Frazier with BunkyLife.com. BunkyLife.com. David Frazier, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll talk to you next week. Appreciate your time, Clay. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Attend the world's best business workshop led by America's number one business coach for free by subscribing on iTunes and leaving us an objective review. Claim your tickets by emailing us proof that you did it and your contact information to info at thrivetimeshow.com. The Thrive Time Show on your radio. And today we're talking about a very serious subject in the game of business that very few people think about at all. It's like a super serious, game-changing, probably business-destroying 
concept if you don't adhere to this 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 idea, this proven system, is if you don't have a checklist for everything, everything falls apart. So I'm going to give you an example. There is a book. I want to make sure we put this on the show notes here. It is called The Checklist Manifesto. So I want to make sure we put this on the show notes. We'll put a link to The Checklist Manifesto so you can buy it on Amazon if you would like to. If you haven't read the book, you absolutely, uh, it, I, I think that the when you read probably half of the book, even a third of the book, you, you would say to yourself, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I've been trying to run a business without checklists. What happens is the Checklist Manifesto was a book written by an author by the name of Atul Gawande. He's an American surgeon uh, over at Harvard University. Harvard. He's sort of a big deal. Um, and he decided, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to travel around the world to hospitals, and I'm going to find out what percentage of the deaths that are occurring, the deaths that are occurring, are happening as a result of somebody not using a checklist. That's what I'm going to do. And so as he went from hospital to hospital, he found, Chup, that in certain hospitals, one third, Chup, one third Jeez. of the people that died, died as a result of somebody not using a basic checklist. Now, do you want to hear the big three reasons why people died? I don't, but I will listen because it freaks me out. <laughs> okay. One is that the doctor did not read your chart Ugh. and gave you uh, a pain medication. Like if, they, like if they have to knock you out, if you have to go to sleep when they have the surgery. It's anesthesiologist, is that what it's called? Right. Yeah. If they give you the wrong medication that you're allergic to, you will die. Uh, that's one. That's real. That is real. That is real. That is real right there. The second Ugh. is they forgot to wash their own hands. So they, as a doctor had an infection that they put into your body because they opened up your flesh. Okay, homie, you, you don't want to wash. You don't want to wash while you're eating. That's up to you, but you got to wash your, I think it's a whole thing, scrubbing in, right? Right. How do they forget that? Uh, a third is they forgot to wash the patient's skin. <sighs> so what he said is he wrote down his, his findings, and I would like for you, Chup, to read his findings, but read his findings, read his first notable quote. We'll read, read it nice and slow so okay. we can soak in, because this is, mm, we're we talking go. about, deaths that are occurring in hospitals, planes that are crashing in the world of small business, small aircraft, personal pe people are dying as a result of their small aircraft crashing as a result of not doing ongoing maintenance. We're talking about small business owners dropping the ball and ruining the foundation on homes because they forgot to follow a checklist. Right. We're talking about companies going bankrupt because they forgot to invoice somebody. We're talking about people getting in trouble with the Unemployment Commission for forgetting to withhold taxes. Chup, there's got to be something really going on when people are, are refusing to use a checklist. There's got to be something deep going on. What does Atul Gawande have to say about Atul it? Atul has to say, we don't like checklists. Oh. They can be painstaking. Oh, come on. They're not much fun. But I don't think the issue here is mere laziness. I think it is, but I <laughs> well, let's let Atul continue. Okay. There's something deeper, more visceral going on when people walk away not only from saving lives, but from making money. Okay. It somehow feels beneath, beneath us to use a checklist, an embarrassment. It runs counter to deeply held beliefs about how the truly great among us, those we aspire to be, handle situations of high stakes and complexity. The truly great are daring. They improvise. They do not have protocols and checklists. Maybe our idea of heroism needs updating. I would just say this, that if you are refusing to use a checklist, in the Bible... It reads, God blesses the hands of the diligent, right? Proverbs 10, 4. I want to put that on the show notes there, Chuck, so we can see Proverbs 10, 4, because a lot of people don't, um, you know, they don't, they're not, they're, 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 maybe they're a Christian, but they haven't really delved into the book of Proverbs. But I'm going to read you Proverbs 10, 4, the King, the King James Version. And Chuck, I'd like to put the King James Version version on there because I feel like this one is is it resonates very it, it always motivates me to use a checklist I I whenever I feel the need to not use the the checklist I decide to read Proverbs 10 for the King James version and it always motivates me it says well, resonators it says up. he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent maketh rich 
Again, he becometh poorth, he becometh poor <laughs> that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the of the diligent maketh rich. What it's saying is, if you refi- if you refuse to use a checklist, you deserve to be poor. This is the chop. Chop, it if is. you refuse to use a checklist, you deserve to lose. What is going to happen no matter what? Okay, I see this a lot. Um, I saw this in my own family with the concrete company that we had. My dad intrinsically knew everything and would not forget anything ever because he did it every day for 35 years. Well, guess what happens when he's not in charge of every crew that we have going out anymore because we've grown beyond that capacity. <sighs> The guys that have been doing these jobs for 15, 20 years forget key essential pieces of equipment like a rod board that you use to strike off the concrete when you're pouring it. And therefore, we lose five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 worth of concrete and product, uh, productivity because of one simple thing of not using a checklist to make sure you have all of the equipment. Now, 1 Timothy 5, 8, which was also in that controversial book called the Bible, this, this verse is pretty terrible uh, for people that are slackers. And I... Chup, I, I actually texted this to a guy the other day. Ooh. And you know why I did it? Because you needed to. Because he was like absolutely um, criticizing. He was criticizing uh, a client of ours. It was hilarious. This guy was criticizing a client of ours for being so intense. Come on. He's like, all you care about is getting stuff done. So the client's telling me, the client says, I have a vendor that's criticizing me for wanting tight deadlines. And he was criticizing me saying it's not all about the money. It's not about the money, okay? There's more to life than just the money. You need to calm down. And I said, send him this text <laughs> message. And if you send him this text message, I promise you won't get a response. Or if you do, it'll be, be kind of over. Chup, can you read 1 okay. Timothy 5.8? Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So I want you to think about this. In the Bible, it says that if you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you get to go to heaven. Correct? Correct. And it, so it says that if you don't, then God will judge you and you basically get to go to hell if God judges that you should go to hell, right? Right. So it's saying here that you're worse. <laughs> <laughs> like this means that you go to a hell that's extra hot. It's the basement of hell. It's if weird. you choose not to provide for your family. He says, anyone, 1 Timothy 5.8, I'm not paraphrasing, I'm reading it word for word. Anyone who do, does not provide for the relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So I would just encourage you, I I honestly do not use checklists because I'm motivated to. It's because I don't want to literally go to hell. I literally do not want to go to hell. It seems like you have some insecurity problems. Absolutely. I don't want to not provide for my family and screw up. So I use checklists. If you don't want to use a checklist, there's something psychologically wrong with you. You've got to use checklists. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. It's the Thrive Time Show on the radio. Mm. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. It's all about you. 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 So we bring the boom. All right, Thrive Nation, what we're talking about today is the importance of creating a checklist for everything in your life everything, and in your business. I've got a lot of notable quotables to, to read to you and a lot of facts, a lot of data, but I have uh, one thing I would encourage all of our listeners to do. I would encourage all of our listeners to buy the book Checklist Manifesto and read the first half of the book at least and just see after reading the first half of the book if there's any way possible that you are not going to use checklists moving forward, because this is what happens is Atul Gawande, uh, he is a, a, a he's very well-known uh, American surgeon. Uh, he's a guy who works with, with Harvard. Um, he's he's the, their professor of surgery at, Har- at, at Harvard University, okay? Um, and he was noticing, Chuck, that a lot of people were dying yeah. in hospitals, and he thought... I'm sure it's a result of, you know, just people dying. There's, there's some things you can't solve. There's, pro- there's surgeries that just don't go well. You just can't win all the time. It's part of the game. So he thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to investigate thousands of people at some of the biggest hospitals in the world, thousands of doctors. I'm just going to, and I'm going to just study the causes of death. 
and they found that one-third of all of the deaths that were occurring were happening as a result of a doctor, a surgeon, choosing not to use a checklist. Come on. If, and you know what the three things they were missing were, That's if you're it. just tuning in? Freak One me out. Is Go they ahead. Said, Freak me out. Do they it. didn't read your chart ahead of time. Almost happened to me. So they actually removed, like, the wrong part of the body they yeah. amputated the wrong leg had I, surgery on the wrong knee that's I what mean, happened to me that's really? what happened to me yep they almost uh, i tore my uh, left acl in high school and i went in to have surgery at 15 years old and they're giving me the anesthesia and i look down and they're shaving my right leg no and i'm going no <laughs> no and they look at the chart oh switch over so so i'm telling they you they took out a sharpie and put a big x on the on my right knee to say this is not the one <laughs> Jeez. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. And I, I know very I, I know many people in my life. I have one person in my family who they gave them the wrong anesthesia. Yeah. Almost killed them. Yeah. Um it I know easily happened. I know that my grandfather died as a result of them skipping the checklist at the VA hospital. He was in perfect health. He went in for knee surgery and they forgot to give him something and he died. <sighs> and they apologized. Well, yeah, thanks. We got an American flag because he served in the military. Cool. They said, Hey, we're sorry. You know, they said, "Hey, we would, you know, we did our best." I mean, I remember. No, you didn't. <laughs> so again, now, now, maybe that's not motivating enough. So please read the notable quotable again at the at the top of the show notes All from right. Atul Gawande. So he says, "We don't like checklists. They can be painstaking. They're not much fun." But I don't think the issue. Who the hell cares? Right. <laughs> when have we decided to have fun or not? Right. This is absolutely ridiculous. You know what else isn't fun? What? A lot of things at work. I think it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I see so many business owners that are absolutely putting their life in the crapper as a result of not using a freaking checklist. Use a checklist. Continue. Okay. Ooh, passion got me. Scared me there for a minute. I was looking Sorry. the other way. Ooh. Sorry. Ooh. Okay. Back. But I, so he continues to say, but I don't think the issue here is mere laziness. Clay might disagree. There's uh, something deeper, more visceral going on when people walk away, not only from saving lives, but from making money. It's called you being an ass. Or, Back to you. Right. Uh, it somehow feels beneath us to use a checklist and embarrassment. It runs counter to- Because you're an idiot. Continue. It runs counter to deeply held beliefs about how the truly great among us, those who we aspire to be, handle situations of high stakes and complexity. The truly great are daring. They improvise. They do not have protocols and checklists. But, he says, maybe our idea of heroism needs updating. You know, and the Bible piles on, though. The Bible, Proverbs 10, 4 says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Slack meaning a slacker, meaning you're choosing to slack. You're choosing to not do what you're supposed to do. You see, the word diligence means the consistent application of effort. And if you refuse to follow a checklist after you know the importance of doing it, there is a problem with you. And the cool deal, here's the deal. This is so cool. This is so cool. I'm so this is this part is so cool. Like this the is, other side of the pillow, my no, baby. This is cool. Because what happens is if I'm competing with you and you're not using a checklist and I am, you see, I get to take all the money because, you see, you get to be poor. It's actually a universal law that God created. And no see, checklist equals checkmate. Oh, oh, it's over, see, baby. You don't sow the seeds, <laughs> but I do. I get a harvest and you don't. And, you know, 1 Timothy 5.8 reads, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Is that from the Bible? What verse was that again? 1 Timothy 5.8. Why are you saying it so slow? Because I want you to look it up. 1 Timothy 5.8. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, especially for their house, household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Chup, we have another notable quotable from Atul Gawande. Please read on. All right, he says, There are good checklists and bad, Borman explained. Bad checklists are vague and imprecise. They are too long, they're hard to use, mm. and they're impractical. They are made by desk jockeys with no awareness of the situations in which they are to be deployed. They treat the people using the tools as dumb and try to spell out every single step. They turn people's brains off rather than turn them on. Now, he says, on the other hand, a good checklist uh, are precise. They are efficient, to the point, and easy to use even in the most difficult situations. They do not try to spell out everything. A checklist cannot fly a plane. I want to repeat that. A checklist cannot fly a plane. Instead, they are they provide reminders of only the most critical and important steps, the ones that even the highly skilled professionals using them could miss. Good checklists are, above all, 
practical. This is the thing. This is the thing. A lot of people say, you know, my line of work, though, baby, it is so complex. There's so much stuff. That I can't possibly use a checklist. I, I'm a genius, man. I went to school for so long. Chuck, but Atul Gawande chimes in. What does he say here? He says, it is common to misconceive how checklists function in complex lines of work. Ooh. They are not comprehensive how-to guides, yes. whether for building a skyscraper or getting a plane out of trouble. They are quick and simple tools aimed to buttress the skills of expert professionals. To buttress the skills of expert professionals. And by remaining swift and usable and resolutely, uh, resolutely modest, they are saving thousands upon thousands of lives. So this is, these are the checklists that you need to make with your business coach. You need to create the daily opening the business checklist, a checklist for opening your business. You know, these are the things that need to happen every day to open the business. Unlock the door. Turn on the lights. Get now the here are the register. checklists for closing the day of business. Yeah. Lock the door. Turn off the lights. <laughs> these are all things. But you have to do it because if not, people will forget a stand. Yes, every time. And then you have to create move number three. Remember, move number one, create a daily checklist for opening the business. Move number two. Create the daily checklist for closing the business. Move number three, create the daily checklist for marketing activities. Create the daily marketing activities checklist. Chuck, why do you have to create a checklist for your marketing activities? Mm, so you don't forget to do it? Like putting out the signs right. in front of the store. <laughs> Call the leads. Call maybe. the leads. Call the Turning leads is kind of ends. important. Yeah. You know, Chuck, what's the next action item we all need to take? Uh, create the weekly team training agenda checklist. And then the final checklist. Create the uh, checklist for when and what you need to do for your accounting. Create the checklist for when and what you need to do your accounting. So you got to do that. Now, if you do that, my babies, my you're going to have a lot of success. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you do that, my babies, oh. we're all going to have some success. Gotcha. We're all going to be blessed. We're all going to make a lot of money. We're all going to be great. Once uh, you know what to do, but you choose not to do it, there's a bigger problem there. Right. And one thing I've seen a lot is is his the previous quote that we read, the one right before, was that on the business owners a lot of time, if you're not training your team up enough to understand the protocols and the processes, writing out some crazy 27-page checklist is not going to help them. It's going to put them off even more. So you've got to be, you've got to take time, schedule time to create the checklist and get 2% better always, always, always making them better. If you if you refuse to embrace the power of a checklist, you're just going to lose true and if you're somebody who is uh, secular in nature and you don't uh, like bible quotes that would yell at you or uh, i feel like i have to be the mouthpiece of the bible today <laughs> then you just read the checklist manifesto and you can read about all the people dying all around the world planes crashing things messing up as a result of bridges collapsing bridges collapsing as a result of people not using checklists or if you prefer to go to the Bible as your source of wisdom, Proverbs 10, 4 says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand and refuses, refusing to use the checklist Fs. No, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Also, the Bible chimes on to say, chimes in to say, 1 Timothy 5, 8, Anyone who does not provide for the relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Thrive Nation, we want to help you. But we can't help you unless we get a chance to know you. Go to thrivetimeshow.com today, and there you're going to find all of the archive podcasts, a place where you can book your tickets to the next in-person Thrive Time Show workshop. You find the one-on-one -on -one business coaching and a video library with thousands and thousands of video versions of these podcasts and other trainings with celebrities and millionaire mentors. So you can learn from mentors and not mistakes. Oh, yes. And now with any further ado, we like to end the show with a three and a two and a one. Here we go. Three, three two, two, one. one. Boom. My name is Joe Lai, and I'm with Kirkpatrick and Lai Orthodontics. At Kirkpatrick and Lai Orthodontics, we create beautiful smiles by straightening kids' teeth and adults' teeth. The services that Clay and his team provide um, would be something like um, how to get more uh, customers into my uh, business and get the message out that I'm the best orthodontist in Tulsa. Um, he does that by uh, social media. Um, we get the word out through videos and pictures uh, and being just top mind awareness as he would always say. Um, also uh, how to reach out and create that bond um, with my referring doctors. Um, he helped me kind of get somebody in-house to um, go out and meet doctors and help me kind of continue building that relationship while I do the work. Um, 
website. Um, the website's so majorly important. Uh, we get several patients through our website. And what he's doing is he's, um, there's a certain way that you want your website to look um, and certain content because um, you want call to action items in your website and we didn't have that before. So now we get seven or eight new patients just through the website alone. Clay and his team are, I would just say they're over the top. I mean, nothing is too big, nothing's too grand for Clay and, and his staff and his team. I mean, he says boom, he really means it. I mean, they over, over deliver, really, to be honest with you. Um, and they come up with ideas that, um, that are just top notch. And if you don't like something, great, move on. He'll figure out something that works for your style and your identity. But uh, I would just say the biggest thing for Clay and his team is they over deliver. Clay and his team, um, help kind of create that culture also for your business that, hey, we got to get things done uh, in a timely manner. Uh, it holds me accountable to do uh, the certain tasks so that um, uh, we can create things in a timely manner. So there is a sense of urgency that he creates. Um, just And it's a lot of it's just through his enthusiasm. Um, he's always on the go, so it kind of puts you on that same mindset of, hey, let's get this done. Let's work hard, but let's also have fun with it. When I went to orthodontic school, we got zero training on marketing. Um, actually, when we got out of school, when I got out of school uh, 18 years ago, it was kind of taboo to actually do any marketing. Um, the most you could do is uh, put your name in, the, in uh, the yellow pages. And so now it's pretty common knowledge and pretty mainstream to go ahead and get your name out there, tell everybody your story, who you are, what you're about. Um, if you don't do that, you're, it's a leg of your business that is gonna f that you're lagging behind. Because you could be the best orthodontist or the best whatever, but if people don't know that, um, then you're gonna be you won't get the customers coming in. I meet with Clay and his team um, on every Friday about 11 o'clock, and um, to be honest with you, at, at the beginning I wasn't that thrilled with it coming in every week just kind of seemed like a lot but for me I find the marketing aspect interesting um, I enjoy it um, I love working with Clay I think it's mainly the reason why uh, I've kind of built a relationship with him uh, I kind of think it got to a level now we're, we're pretty good friends and so um, it's to me it's enjoyable I really enjoy uh, the creativity and um, how when you put the energy into it and the work into it how um, you know you get everything kind of comes back and it works. I've worked with Clay and his team for about uh, I think it's about three years, and uh, every year it's just gotten better and things have grown uh, more every year. I've been trying to get my wife um, and her pediatric dentist uh, office and our partners on board with Clay um, for a while. Uh, I just saw that um, they were kind of getting stagnant. Um, in their practice and times were kind of getting uh, slow for them and they needed more uh, referrals and I knew that Clay could definitely help them out by even just one thing which would be change your website and just by doing that you're gonna get patients um, uh, very easily but another thing too is that they you know they needed to change their culture and their mindset of um, how to bring in patients uh, and creating a brand as well for them and uh, giving them more of an identity um, so the whole staff could kind of rally around them. For anybody that's coming out of school uh, or just starting new uh, with a business uh, of any sort, be it medical or uh, anything of that nature, uh, I would highly recommend Clay uh, helping you create that business model. Um, we're trained to do what we're trained to do, but we're not trained to uh, do the business aspect or the marketing or how to deal with the patient or uh, uh, our staff. So Clay can pretty much do all that. But what I like the most about Clay and his staff is that everything's in house. I don't have to go to one place to do my website. I don't have to go somewhere to do my videos. I don't have to go another place to shoot. Um, photographs, um, somewhere else to do web content 
or team coaching or entrepreneurship. Um, Clay pretty much is the total package. Um, he's really a great mentor. So if you're new and starting a business and you want to avoid all the pitfalls, I would definitely hook up with Clay and his, and his team. If someone's not using Clay and his team um, to help build their business, they're missing out on a lot. Um, there's so many details and so many aspects um, of creating a business that Clay really makes it simple, makes it fun, and you learn so much in a short amount of time that um, I think he's the best um, entrepreneur, business coach, marketer, you name it. The guy's and his team's got it all going on. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I want to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy is just amazing. He's, he's This kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours on the day to day. He does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies. He's at the top. He has a team of uh, business coaches, videographers, and graphic designers and web developers, and they run 160 companies every single week. So think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies. So in the weekly, he's running 160 companies. Um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up and he teaches people a 13 step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building it into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like, Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and, and that's what I like him most about it. He's like, he's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down. Um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't, his highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or uh, you know, navigating competition and, 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 and an economy that's like, I remember we got closed down for three months. He helped us navigate on how to stay open, how to, how to get back open, how to um, uh, just survive through all the COVID shutdowns, lockdowns, because our clubs were all closed for three months and you have $350,000 of bills you've got to pay and uh, we have no accounts receivable. He helped us navigate that. Um, and of course we were conservative enough that we could afford to, to take that on for a period of time. But it was, uh, anyways, great man. I'm very imp impressed with him. So Clay, thank you for everything you're doing. And um, I encourage you if, you, if you haven't ever worked with Clay, work with Clay, he's gonna help magnify you. And there's nobody I have ever met that has the ability to work as hard as he does. He probably sleeps four, maybe six hours a day and literally the rest of the time he's working and he can outwork everybody in the room 
every single day and, and he loves it. So anyways, um, this is Charles Kola with Kola Fitness. Thank you, Clay. Um, and anybody out there that's wanting to work with Clay, um, it's a great, great uh, opportunity to ever work with him. So you guys have a blessed one. This is Charles Kola. We'll see you guys. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Aaron Antis with Shaw Homes. I first heard about Clay through a mortgage lender here in town who had told me what a great job he had been doing for them. And I actually noticed he was driving a Lamborghini all of a sudden, so I was willing to listen. Uh, in my career, I've sold a little over $800 million in real estate. So honestly, I thought I kind of knew everything about marketing and um, homes. And then I met Clay and my perception of what I knew and what I could do definitely changed. After doing 800 million in sales over a 15 year career, I really thought I knew what I was doing. I've been managing a large team of salespeople for the last 10 years here with Shaw Homes. And I mean, we've been a company that's been in business for 35 years. We've become one of the largest builders in the Tulsa area, and uh, that was without Clay. So when I came to know Clay, I really thought, man, there's not much more I need to know, but I'm willing to listen. The interesting thing is our internet leads from our website has actually in a four month period of time has gone from somewhere around 10 to 15 leads in a month to 180 internet leads in a month. Just from the few things that he's shown us how to implement that I honestly probably never would have come up with on my own. So uh, I got a lot of good things to say about the system that Clay put in place with us. And it's just been an incredible experience. I am very glad that we met and had the opportunity to work with Clay. So the interaction with the team and with Clay on a weekly basis is honestly very enlightening. One of the things that I love about Clay's perspective on things is that he doesn't come from my industry. He's not somebody who's in the home building industry. I've listened to all the experts in my field. Our company has paid for me to go to seminars, international builder shows, all kinds of places where I've had the opportunity to learn from the experts in my industry. But the thing that I found working with Clay is that he comes from such a broad spectrum of working with so many different types of businesses that he has a perspective that's difficult for me to gain because I get so entrenched in what I do, I'm not paying attention to what other leading industry experts are doing. And Clay really brings that perspective for me. It is very valuable time every week when I get that hour with him. From my perspective, the reason that any business owner who's thinking about hooking up with Thrive needs to definitely consider it is because the results that we've gotten in a very short period of time are honestly monumental. It has really exceeded my wildest expectation of what he might be able to do. I came in skeptical because I'm very pragmatic and as I've gone through the process over just a few months, I've realized it's probably one of the best moves we've ever made. I think a lot of people probably feel like they don't need a business or marketing consultant because they maybe are a little bit prideful and like to think they know everything. I know that's how I felt coming in. I mean, we're a big company that's definitely one of the largest in town. And so we kind of felt like we knew what we were doing. And I think for a lot of people, they let their ego get in the way of listening to somebody that might have a better or different perspective than theirs. I would just really encourage you if you're thinking about working with Clay. I mean, the thing is, it's month to month. Go give it a try and see what happens. I think in the 35 year history of Shaw Homes, this is probably the best thing that's happened to us. And I know if you give them a shot, I think you'll feel the same way. I know for me, the thing I would have missed out on if I didn't work with Clay is I would have missed out on literally an 1800% increase in our internet leads, going from 10 a month to 180 a month. That would have been a huge financial decision to just decide not to give it a shot.
I would absolutely recommend Clay Clark to anybody who's thinking about working with somebody in marketing. I would skip over anybody else you were thinking about and I would go straight to Clay and his team. I guarantee you're not gonna regret it because we sure haven't. My name is Danielle Sprick and I am the founder of D. Sprick Realty Group here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. After being a stay-at-home mom for 12 years and my three kids started school and they were in school full-time, I was at a crossroads and trying to decide what what do I want to do? My degree and my background is in education, but after being a mom and staying home and all of that, I just didn't have a passion for it like I once did. My husband suggested real estate. He's a home builder, so real estate and home building go hand in hand, and we just rolled with it. I love people. I love working with people. I love the building relationships. But one thing that was really difficult for me was the business side of things. The processes and the advertising and marketing. I knew that I did not have what I needed to make that what it should be. So I reached out to Clay at that time. And he and his team have been extremely instrumental in helping us build our brand, um, help market our business, our agents. The homes that we represent, everything that we do uh, is a direct line from Clay and his team and all that they've done for us. We launched our brokerage, our real estate brokerage, eight months ago. And in that time, we've gone from myself and one other agent to just this week, we signed on our 16th agent. Um, we have been blessed with the fact that we right now have just over 10 million in pending transactions. Three years ago, I never would have even imagined that I would be in this role that I'm in today, building a business, having 16 agents, but I have to give credit where credit's due, and Clay and his team and the business coaching that they've offered us has been huge. It's been instrumental in what we're doing. Don't ever limit your vision. When you dream big, big things happen. I started a business because I couldn't work for anyone else. I do things my way. Um, I do what I think is in the best interest of the patient. I don't answer to insurance companies. I don't answer to large corporate organizations. I answer to my patient and that's it. My thought when I opened my clinic was I can do this all myself. Uh, I don't need uh, additional outside help in many ways. I, I mean, I, I went to medical school, I can figure this out. But it was a very, very steep learning curve. Within the first six months of opening my clinic, I had a $63,000 embezzlement. Um, I lost multiple employees. Clay helped us weather the storm of some of the things that are just a lot of people experience, especially in the medical world. He was instrumental in helping with the specific written business plan. He's been instrumental in hiring good quality employees, using the processes that he outlines for getting in good talent, which is extremely difficult. He helped me in securing the business loans. He helped me with uh, web development and search engine optimization. We've been able to really keep a steady stream of clients coming in uh, because they found us on the web. With everything that I encountered, everything that I experienced, I, I quickly learned it is worth every penny to have someone in your team that can walk you through and even avoid some of the pitfalls that are almost invariable in starting your own business. I'm Dr. Chad Edwards and I own Revolution Health and Wellness Clinic. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the highest and most reviewed business workshops on the planet. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. 
You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying. And I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same system that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever. And we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you.